Chapter 2 talks about mental health and mental illness and uh, how uh, those two terms are defined and how sometimes <laughs> it's hard to define what those are. But um, we pretty much are going to focus on mental health and mental illness as a continuum. And, and an example of that is in your book on page uh, 12. And it tells you uh, as far as you know, optimum health, you're, you're having ability to function, and then you can deteriorate all the way to disability or, or dysfunction uh, with mental health or mental illness. So those uh, factors include uh, coping strategies that we talked about in 305, uh, you know, happiness, control over behavior, the ability to work, and so forth. So make sure that you are um, looking over that. And also it talks about the prevalence you know, it talks about epidemiology of different uh, mental health illnesses and substance abuse is uh, actually included in that too. So there is a, a, a table on page 13 that talks about uh, the disorders and what the prevalence is and the epidemiology as to who it affects more. I did post some resources for you on Moodle uh, from NAMI, the National Alliance of Mental Illness, and then I put the website, a link to the website for the National Institute for Mental Health, just some extra things that you would have um, available to you if you wanted to do you know, more research on, on any, uh, any aspect of mental illness, and also uh, a fact sheet uh, on this same thing on prevalence, and what else did I post? Uh, oh, I posted uh, your local uh, NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Illness, uh, it's a local contacts uh, information on there. And Louisville has maybe three or four, it looks like, uh, contacts for, for NAMI. Um, talk about parity, mental health parity, which means that uh, insurances are uh, required to cover mental illnesses at the same level that they do uh, physical illnesses and that's not always been the case. We've come a long way as far as parity and being able to get things covered. Although, you know, funding for a lot of outpatient mental health services, you know, have been cut and it's affected, uh, you know, our country tremendously. Um, so you can look at those. Um, and you can look at how culture and spirituality affects uh, mental illness and the perception of mental illness. Um, we have to look at the whole person again holistically to determine if their behaviors have a basis uh, in their culture. Is that normal for what their culture uh, is? So that's something we do have to consider when we're doing our assessment and our analysis. Um, and the last topic that in chapter two talks about stigma. And we're going to go a little deeper as far as stigma, and we're going to do a project in class about stigma. But just think about um, the things that happen every day in society and how people with mental illnesses are labeled, uh, often degraded, uh, and, and it's, it's very sad. So therefore, you can see why it's hard for people who have mental issues, mental illness issues, or even problems how difficult it is sometimes to seek treatment for fear that they will uh, be a victim of stigma. Um, if you'll look at the prevalence, you know, in our country of uh, anxiety disorders, depression disorders, substance use, um, it's, it's quite, it's quite high. Um, so we've got to do everything we can as nurses to promote uh, treatments and advances in mental uh, illness uh, issues and that is pretty much uh, just a little wrap up of um, chapter 2